objects are really special to us in our daily lives. We use objects and objects are really special for one very good reason and that is they encapsulate nouns, adjectives and verbs. So first of all you have nouns. Can you describe the object through nouns and adjectives to describe the nouns? So for example your computer, well yes you can. Colour, weight, size, make, all of these things can be nouns and with adjectives describing those nouns we get a complete description of our computer for example. And they also have verbs associated with them as well. So for example I can type, I can click and I can open up applications on my computer. These are verbs. So objects are really special because they encapsulate and what encapsulate means is put together or store together. So for example if I was to get a container and I was to put my packed lunch within the container then I am containing, I am encapsulating whatever is inside of the container. In that case it's my dinner. So that is encapsulation. Objects just encapsulate data together. They isolate the nouns, adjectives and verbs together and then when you put them all together you can produce an object. And likewise your programs need to be able to do this because why do we have programs? To make our lives easier. And What do we work with? We work with objects. If I had a furniture company that wanted to sell furniture online I need a program to catalogue all of those objects, all of those pieces of furniture, make, size, colour, all the rest of it. If I had a car company I'd need objects in my program to resemble cars. If I had a hoover company each hoover has its own make, style, serial number and each object in and of itself has its own identity. For example you can take one iPad and put the same iPad right next to it but think about this even though they look the same and actually physically they are identical but the difference is they're unique. Objects have uniqueness even though they may be physically identical they may store different data and have different users and have different owners. So it's important to establish the criteria of discovering objects and there's a very good reason for this because you'll need to do this as a programmer. One, can it be owned? That's all you have to look at to decipher whether something is an object or not. So for example an iPad can be owned so we could have an object for an iPad and even though I can duplicate that object and have another object over here, they can have two different owners. This object can be owned by Lawrence and this object over here could be owned by John. So they have different owners, they have that ability. And also the reason why you need to be able to establish ownership is because sometimes objects are not literal. They're not a hoover or a piece of furniture or whatever object you can think of. Sometimes objects are not so obvious. For example, bank accounts. Now bank accounts, you can't physically, tangibly touch them or go inside of them and roll around in all the money you have. Instead, your bank accounts are actually virtual. They don't exist in a physical sense. So in that respect, you have to be able to identify ownership and not everything is in the physical realm, some of it is in the virtual realm and they're not so obvious. But all you have to do to easily find out if something should be an object in your program is identify can it be owned. If it can be owned, if you can have ownership then it is absolutely an object. Objects can be owned and possessed. So with objects what we have is properties. Properties are essentially variables, nouns and adjectives. So when we have a variable essentially inside of an object, a key and value pair, a property, then that is a property. It is a way to describe the object. They're your nouns and adjectives, your key and value pairs. So for example the colour that's the noun and the value, the adjective, is red. That's a variable but because it's inside of an object we don't call it a variable anymore, we call it a property. 
And likewise, you have methods. Methods are functions, they're your verbs. So your verbs could be typing, clicking, or opening an application on, let's say, a computer type object. So these are verbs that you can perform on this specific object. So we don't just say functions and variables, we say properties, which are variables, and methods, which are functions. And the reason why we say properties instead of variables and methods instead of functions is because again, immediately we know what we're talking about. So if I say to you, just randomly came up out of the blue and said, please add this property and add this method immediately you instantaneously now know because I said property instead of variable and method instead of function. I have told you already just by that what type of data you're working with and what you're working with is an object. So remember properties are variables and methods are functions. That's it, we just give them a different name so that if I were to come up to you or any other program were to come up to you and say, please change this property or that method, immediately you'll be able to tell he's talking about an object and I don't have to state it so obviously to you that go to this object and I want you to change that variable and I want you to change that function. Instead I can say change that property and change that method, I never even needed to state the word object. Now this in a programming language is called an object because it's extremely literal. You can look at it and you can pretty much identify the object it's talking about. So for example, you could look at this object and you can see, wait a minute, we've got size, weight, and maker. These are all nouns. And then you also have the adjectives. And by those, I can sort of describe what object I'm looking at. That means that we are working with an object. And also you have the verbs. And by just looking at the verbs, the method names, I can identify immediately what type of object I'm working with. If I had a method of drive or stop, I would know that I'm working with a particular object that has movement, typically a car, a truck, or something of a kind. So objects are very literal. You could look at an object in a programming language and you could identify this is an object because I can look at the keys and the keys give me information about the nouns and also they give me the verbs. That gives me a clue of what I'm looking at. When you look at an object, it's obvious for what it is. It's very literal. But there is another type of object which is not so literal. Another type of object is an array. And an array is a little bit different from an object. It's still an object. Arrays are objects, but they're a different type. Arrays are registers. They register similar types of data. And there's a very good reason for that. You can imagine when you went into school, the first thing the teacher did was they pulled out a register. And a register is an object. And it groups together people's names. Now, each individual's name has nothing to do with somebody else's name. Just because somebody's called Edward here doesn't mean then we've got to have somebody over here called Edward. Each name is individual. It's on its own. But it's registered and it's easily iterable. That's the difference between a literal object, which is to identify objects in the real world, and we can look at the key names, the nouns and the verbs, and we can easily sort of identify what object we're talking about in our program. And that's good, but sometimes in your program you want to iterate over. For example, names in a register. So you could have a program that needs to grab everybody's name in a classroom, and you need to go through each one of those individuals' names, and you need to check to see if they're there. And you need to, let's say, print out a list of their names. So in this case, would a literal object be worth it? No, we don't need to say person name, name, person name two, name, person name three, name. That would be a waste of time. Instead, we want the data to correlate together. It already knows what type of data we're working with, so it's a register. Just like a teacher goes through each name in a register to see if you're there in the classroom. It's easily 
iterable. So if I have five one pound coins in front of me and I iterate through them and go one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, so forth, then what I'm doing is I'm iterating, going one by one by one. And sometimes in your program, like a register, you want to do that. So having a literal object doesn't make sense here. I need an iterable object, meaning I have an object that I can go one by one by one by one. I don't need a specific key name for each one. I know that each element in this array has the names of the people in the classroom. So I can go one by one by one by one by one. And that's why we have arrays. Arrays are registers. And each element in the array, which means each value in the array, we call values elements in arrays. And there's a very good reason for that. The reason why we do it is because if I say add this element, immediately you know I'm talking about arrays. If I said add this value, you'd be like, what? Add a value to what? But if I said add this element, you immediately know you have to add a value to an array. Objects contain variables and they also contain functions. Variables inside of objects are called properties and functions are called methods. You have key and value pairs in objects. The key can either be a noun or it could be a verb and the value is either going to be an adjective or it's going to be a function which is the process behind the verb to complete the action on that object. You also have another object type which is called array. Arrays contain values called elements and these values don't have to relate to one another. These values are here so that we can iterate over each element or value easily within our program and perform a certain process. For example, printing out all the names or checking on all those individuals in the register are here in the classroom and so forth. So you have all of those different processes or they're great for analyzing data. When you analyze data, you collate, which means group the data together. And then what you need to do is you need to go through that data one by one by one and you need to analyze it and identify what you're looking for. So we have two different object types. You have a main object type, which is to describe literal objects, and you have array object types for processing.